Find the function f, uh, given the derivative and the initial condition. So in this case, we will not actually be wanting to find the function f. We will want to be finding the function y, since we're given a y notation here. Uh, so what we need to do first in order to get back to an original function is we need to find an antiderivative of this function. So if you just concentrate on the right side here, we just need to find the antiderivative of cosine of x with respect to x. And when you do that, you'll notice that you get the sine of x plus c. And since when you're finding an antiderivative, you're going backward one step, uh, this means that what we just found right here will go backward one step from a second derivative. So that means we will have found the first derivative. So y prime equals sine of x plus c. Now, this notation over here doesn't get used too frequently. Uh, but this means if you substitute pi over 2 into the first derivative, you'll get back a positive 2. So, uh, looking at that, if we evaluate this derivative, y prime of pi over 2 equals the sine of pi over 2 plus c, that's what y prime prime of pi over 2 means, but this is also equal to 2. So now that we have this equation here, we can solve it for c. So in order to solve this equation for c, you need to know that sine of pi over 2 is in fact 1 plus c equals 2. And that will lead you to the conclusion that c equals 1. So that's good, except you can't just have a second derivative, I'm sorry, a first derivative, with a c, and then find out this little bit of information about c, and then not do anything with it. We need to substitute this one back into the first derivative. So our first derivative now becomes y prime equals the sine of x plus 1. The c value got substituted in. All right, so we're still not back to the original function. We have done some work to go from a second derivative to a specific first derivative using this information. But we need to go back and actually find out what is y, what y is equal to. So again, we have to figure out the antiderivative of this bit. And I'm going to do that over here. So the antiderivative of sine of x plus 1 with respect to x ends up being negative cosine of x plus x plus c. And much like we did over here with the y prime, after we figured out the antiderivative, which is the opposite of differentiation, we're going backward, we found that we had a second derivative, moved to a first derivative. Now that we repeated the process again, it's almost like we're just taking away these derivative signs one at a time. So over here, this is the function y, except we still have this plus c hanging around. We need to get rid of that. So back up here to this information, y of pi over 2 is 3 pi. So what that means is if we know y of pi over 2, that is the same thing as writing negative cosine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2 plus c equals 3 pi. And when you go through and simplify this uh, equation over here, 
you'll see that the cosine, the negative cosine of pi over 2 is 0, plus pi over 2 is just pi over 2, plus c equals 3 pi. And when you solve this for c by subtracting pi over 2 from both sides, c is 5 pi over 2. And again, we cannot just stop here. Now, we found a specific c value, yes, but we're trying to find a function. So this c value needs to get substituted back up into the original function. So we'll have a final answer of y equals negative cosine of x plus x plus 5 pi over 2. And there's your answer for the initial condition exercise.